Good day, and thank you for joining us for today's ARC webinar on Industrial Internet of Things. I'm your host, Antonio Chalfi of ARC, and with us today to speak about this topic is Greg Gorbach, VP of Information Driven Manufacturing here at ARC. Greg spearheads ARC's transformative technologies for industry initiatives, including analytics and big data, cloud computing, mobility, and the Industrial Internet of Things. Greg, welcome. Hi, Antonio. Glad to be here. So, uh, Greg, you know, we hear so much about the Internet of Things in the media and in the papers. Uh, is it real or is it hype? Oh, it's real. No doubt there's a huge amount of hype, but, you know, there's a real opportunity there as well, especially in the industrial space. You can think about the Industrial Internet of Things as a collection of technologies that will transform manufacturing. It's a big part of the evolution to an information-driven industrial enterprise. And, you know, we've all seen forecasts of billions of connected things in the near future and, and maybe five billion or so connected industrial things. Whatever the number turns out to be, we all know it's going to be big, and it's a big opportunity for companies to improve their performance. Okay, so just so I can wrap my head around this, can you tell me what is a thing in the industrial IoT context? Okay, sure. Well, you know, in this context, an industrial Internet of Things thing, it's an industrial asset um, of the kind that you might expect, but it's also a platform for new applications and services. It's remotely manageable. It's part of an ecosystem, and, it, uh, and it's got to be secure. So it's got local capabilities um, to make that happen, including uh, some compute power, some communications, it's got the ability to monitor sensors and, and drive actuators, and it can run analytics or agents or apps or something like that on board, and it can stream data. Now, you know, to, to design a product like that, you need to take into account the users and, and, uh, and who's going to be interacting with this machine, which is different from in the past. So who are the players in the product ecosystem? What kind of connection technologies should the product support? Uh, what sensors and data need to be exposed, uh, what intelligence is that going to take, what kind of performance, uh, data selection and buffering and communications frequency and all those technical details need to be supported. So all those are the kind of things that need to be considered in thinking about um, industrial assets today. Uh, Greg, you know, that's a new way of thinking about, you know, industrial assets. But uh, will they be smart and will they be connected or what else do we need to know? Well, yeah, absolutely. So um, this is the, the, the uh, sort of partial list of the technologies that we're going to need in this case. So we need, uh, starting at the bottom, we need uh, smart sensors, uh, embeddable computing and communications. Uh, we need network technologies, cloud computing, analytics tools and visualization tools, some additional software and workflow and business process management, things like that, modeling and simulation, mobile devices and industrial apps. So they're quite a collection of technologies that come together to, uh, to enable this Internet of Things. And one way to think about it is, um, is, is the architecture, which is pretty, um, pretty much like this. We start at the bottom with the intelligent assets. It's got the ability to communicate and, and con control. You have to have something, um, uh, some kind of system or, or device management system to manage all the connected assets and devices that you're going to be monitoring, which could become a lot. And then the big payoff comes from the analytics that you apply once you've got those devices connected. And the, uh, and the applications that you use to do some, uh, some new kind of execution. Once you've got that, then you can think about connecting, how that's going to connect and interact with people, with your uh, existing applications and services, with your value chain, and with third-party services. Interesting, interesting. Um, what changes uh, should we expect to see? Yeah, okay. Well, we're going to see uh, more sensors, uh, a lot more data, more analytics brought to bear, more visibility. We're going to see more software and different requirements for existing software systems like MES or EMI or HMI or EAM. We're going to see um, new product requirements, 
uh, new capabilities in production equipment, which uh, may begin to become software-defined and uh, even autonomous, certainly intelligent. We'll see new architectures, uh, new customer relationships, new service models, uh, and new supplier and ecosystem relationships. So things, there are a lot of things that are going to change. And then uh, many of the changes we expect to see will be in the, in the existing plants. Uh, we're not going to just, um, you know, tear those down and start over again. We're going to go back and add sensors and analytics and software to the existing equipment that's out there so that we can reduce energy consumption and improve operations and, and flexibility. Um, Greg, um, help me understand what part of an industrial company will be affected by the Internet of Things. I mean, is it just production assets? Okay. The, um, you know, at ARC we use this, this three intersecting axes model to think about uh, the, manuf the industrial space or the manufacturing space. So here we see, um, you know, on one axis we see the supply chain uh, out through sales. We see manufacturing and business operations and we see research and development and services. Um, all these things are, uh, are, are subject to improvement uh, through increasing connectivity of, of manufacturing assets. And we talk about, um, you know, um, what we call information-driven manufacturing. So th that's the value of, of information uh, spread among people, uh, systems, and processes. So if you think about uh, uh, this in how the industrial Internet of Things is going to play in this kind of a model, you can start with connection, connected production assets, um, on, so assets on the plant floor, for example. And maybe you add some connectivity and then some advanced analytics uh, and some business process execution software. And now you can start doing things in a little bit different way. You can also add um, connected products. So the products you build, you may stay in touch with over their lifetime. You can gather the, the, the history of those products over time. You can mod watch the current status. You can start doing things like um, offering new services, maybe predictive maintenance or remote monitoring and diagnostic services. Um, so you, you, can, you can move in that direction. Maybe uh, you also learn about your connected, you, you know, as you're, you get some history on your connected products, you may get some ideas for how you're going to redefine or redesign those products in the next generation. Or maybe you can even tweak the software and upgrade them on, on the fly. So you've got some smart product design to consider. And in your newest line of products, you might reach out to, to uh, partners who can, who can help you build that from existing smart components and maybe ship it to your factory with some kind of smart logistics program. So there's a lot of new opportunities for industrial companies in this area. Speaking of which, can you give me one or maybe two examples of real use cases for IoT? Okay. Well, one case is um, is what I call a connected asset. So the idea is to to share some information, some operating information about your assets with the manufacturer. In this case, you know it's a pump manufacturer, and if you can find a way to securely share selected information, and by the way, these kind of system, these kind of solutions exist. Um, then the, the main machine vendor who's asking for this kind of information can start to monitor the equipment, uh, run some analysis, do some alerting, let you know if you're, if you're running it outside of certain parameters or if you're uh, running it in a way that's different from other, other users. They can improve their designs. Uh, they may be able to reduce warranty support costs and pass some of that on to you. They may offer you additional maintenance services or other kinds of services. So that's one, one general kind of example there. Some other more specific examples that we've seen are things like um, wind farm uh, power optimization. So um, the idea is, is not to just let the, let the wind turbine uh, optimize itself, but to use some, um, some techniques for wake management so that the whole farm can uh, operate as one and optimize itself. Uh, another interesting one is collision avoidance. We've seen um, some cases whereby instrumenting construction cranes 
Um, they can be prevented from running into each other in a crowded uh, construction site or into, into other obstructions. And even by, um, you know, by uh, outfitting employees with special badges or, or helmets, you can um, also avoid um, setting down heavy loads on top of workers in the field. So those are a couple of examples, and, and there are a lot of them that we're, we're starting to find. Interesting. Um, we haven't talked about you know, the services component yet. Uh, any thoughts about that? From the services side, um, you know, we think there are a lot of opportunities um, to change the relationship with your customer. So uh, the fundamental notion is to change the way your customers interact with your products and with your services and the way they see you as a valued business partner instead of just an equipment supplier. So users can uh, add and connect the sensors to their existing systems, uh, deploy some analytics to learn from that, maybe change your processes by introducing new services uh, and achieving better performance. And then you can, it, it can become a kind of virtuous circle where you can repeat this either at that same equipment or at another piece of equipment in the plant. Well, Greg, it um, looks like we're at the end of our time today. Do you have any uh, closing thoughts or remarks? Well, first let me say that ARC is currently doing a lot of research in the industrial Internet space on things like analytics and platforms and networks and design tools and all the rest. So we're learning a lot. But we can already see that the industrial Internet of Things has the potential to deliver you know, new and innovative products, innovative services and business models, more energy efficient processes, improved productivity and increased visibility. From the uh, standpoint of an asset owner, you know, there's a, a real opportunity to improve the, the asset performance, lower the asset lifecycle cost, and um, set the stage for, for innovation. And from the asset supplier standpoint, uh, there are also some important value propositions in the area of improving productivity, especially your field service workforce uh, and the ability to fix customer problems remotely. You can improve the, the profitability of your service business and you can uh, innovate, um, even moving from products to, uh, to products as a service, for example. Well, Greg, from my perspective, I mean, this is certainly interesting stuff, and there is no question that IoT will remain as one of the top industry concerns, you know, especially in the years to come. Um, Greg, I just want to say thank you so much for sharing your thoughts and perspective on uh, this issue with us today. Okay, Antonio, thanks very much. My pleasure. And, folks, that will do it today. Uh, please join us again next time for one of our upcoming webinars. For more information on this particular subject, you can email me at hlfeedarcweb.com. And don't forget to follow us on LinkedIn and Twitter. Bye for now.